Man, we're having all kinds of problems. You know what? We're going to go on anyhow. Amen? Amen. But I want you to know something. When people come through that door, we need to love them. And listen, we don't, we don't affirm them. We don't, want to, we don't affirm that. Any, listen, listen. churches and Christians are flying the, the rainbow flags and affirming that and acting like everything. That, that's wrong. Amen. Somebody needs to tell them the truth. Right. you, you got to love people. There we go. Oh. Wow. Shirley, no. pray. I pray. <laughs> you know, I told her we had a meeting and I said, man, listen, well, that, this Wi-Fi is one of the most frustrating things I've had to deal with. You know, after, you know, wait three months and, uh, wow, I don't know. But anyhow, I know love wins. You say, you, say, you know, I've got people in my family. Listen, everybody here has got people that are unsaved and in different kind of lifestyle. Everybody's got, listen, we're not unique. No. Let me tell you how you win them. Love wins. Amen. The love of Jesus wins. Amen. That's how you win. You know, you say, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick my my son or my daughter, my family." That's not gonna win them to the Lord. No. You got to love them to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I hope after three lessons on culture and Marxism, you got a little bit better idea what it is. Got your Bible open up to Matthew chapter twelve. I want to quit looking at that screen down there because I'll get so aggravated. I won't be able to talk. <laughs> Matthew chapter number 12. I'm going to try to tie these verses into, into a thought tonight. I thought I always like to give you a new thought or a new verse kindly on, the, on these lessons. Jesus told this parable, Matthew 12, beginning verse number 43. Matthew 12, verse 43. Can you get those verses on the screen for us back there? Matthew 12, verse 43, 44, and 45. There it is. Listen to what Jesus said. This parable. Now, what you think about this? Jesus said, "When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none." That's talking about the unclean spirit. Then he saith, "I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he's come, he findeth it empty. Empty." Empty. Amen. Empty. Empty. Let me stop right there and say, Satan, listen, this is what I believe. You can, you can take that anywhere. I believe this is reformation without regeneration. Yes, I think it's people who are trying to reform without ever being born again. Yes. I think it's people, we got churches all over the world like that. They're, hey, listen, they're trying to be, they're reforming themselves, but they've never been saved and have the Spirit of God down on the inside. And Jesus said, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh around looking for rest and findeth none and says, I'm going to go back into that house, back into that man, and if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, if you don't have the Holy Ghost of God in you, you are an open vessel for the devil to come back into That's right, man. And this is what he said. He said, find it empty. I think there's a sermon in that. He findeth it empty. Can I tell you, Satan has found America empty. Yes. America is empty. America is empty of its spiritual values. America is empty of its spiritual foundation. America is empty of genuine, born-again, old-time, historical, biblical, Christianity. America is empty of godly values. America is empty of godly morals. America is empty of the Bible being the final authority. America is empty of the love and the devotion for Jesus Christ. America is empty of a love for Jesus. America is empty of a love for unsaved people. America is empty tonight. Amen. And I'll tell you what's happened. Well, wow, there was a time, there was a time not many years ago, man, listen, remember America is really, when you talk about being a republic, a democracy, or whatever you want to call it, man, listen, we're a young country. But I want to tell you, there was a time not many years ago when, listen, our founding fathers took the Bible, they took the Word of God, our laws, our rules, our regulations, our legislation was based upon Judeo-Christian principles. It was based on the Word of God. If you don't believe that, go to Washington, D.C. and look at the government buildings and look at the federal buildings and look at the Bible verses and the Bible scriptures that they have all over that. Our country was founded on the Word of God. Amen. Amen. 
There was a time when revival would sweep through America. There was a time when the old brush arbor days and the old camp meeting days and people were being saved and saloons were being shut down and how of ill repute were being shut down and people were going to church and being saved and living for God. Amen. There was a time when Christianity was respected. Yes. There was a time when the church stood out in the community as a place where you wanted to go. But today we're empty of that in America. Yes. I think what's happened, I think, I think listen, I think what's happened is when, when, when we had that great surge, when we had our, our founding fathers were men of courage, they were men of valor, they were men of the Word of God, and they believed that God was a divine creator, and they believed in the sovereignty of God, and they believed that God was creator. I believe they took that, and I believe they pushed back the darkness, and it's like they pushed back those evil spirits out of America, but tonight I have to believe that we're empty of those Amen. biblical values. Right. And Jesus told the story that when the unclean spirit's gone out of a man, he walketh about seeking rest and seeking a place. And he can't find it. He said, I'll go back. And he finds that house empty, swept, and garnished. Wow. Think about that. Empty, 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 swept, and garnished. Verse 45. That's a mini sermon right there. Verse number 45. Then goeth he. And to, listen, listen. Then goeth he. Who, who's the he? Who's the he? The, the evil spirit. The, 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 the Satan himself. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the, listen to this. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to make something. I'm going to make a statement. And it might. I'll just knock you plumb out of your seat. You might get mad and hit the door running. But I'm going to tell you, America is worse today than she was 200 and some years ago because we're empty of this book. We're empty of the values of God. We're empty of what God says. And we're empty. And we've let Satan come in. And you know what Satan said? I'm just going to come back in. When we kicked God out of school and we took prayer out of school, we took Bible reading out of school, and we took the Ten Commandments out of school, and then we took them out of our courthouses, out of, out of the courthouses, and then we got to where you can't mention Jesus. Oh, listen, you can mention Islam, you can mention Buddhism, you can mention Hinduism, you can mention Satanism, but you can't mention Jesus Christ. There's a problem in America. Amen. Amen. I tell you what. I think happened, I think Satan said, hey, the door's being kicked wide open. I'm going back and I'll take seven spirits that are even more wicked and more devilish than what I am and we'll go in and dwell there and I submit to you tonight that America is worse off. She's more evil. She's more corrupt. She's more satanic influenced than she's ever been in the history of America. Amen. And Jesus said the last state of that man is worse than the first. I believe America, and I'm going to say this to you, and I believe America is worse. I can tell you this. I wasn't there back in 1776. I have read a little bit about it. I do know a little bit about it. But I'm living in 2023. And I'm going to tell you what, we are satanically influenced. Right. We're under satanic attack. Right. We're under spiritual deception. We're seeing every crazy, absolutely madness that you could think of that just raised its, its ugly head. Things that they wouldn't have thought of several years ago have just taken over and it's like they're out to destroy America. That's exactly what cultural Marxism is trying to do is to destroy the very country that we love. Yep. Amen. 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 I'm going to say something to you now. Listen, America's worse off today than when she was founded. Right. America's worse off than what she was 100 years ago. Right. America's worse off than what she was 50 years ago. Right. America's worse off than what she was 10 years ago. Right. 
America's worse off than what she was three years ago. Amen. When we went into COVID and started all that pandemic and all that Amen. stuff and everything's happened, shut the country down, shut the world down, everything in the world happened, we've just gone to pot. And I said on my program, you go back and listen from September of 2020, listen how many times I said, listen, 2021's not going to be any better, it's going to be worse. And it's 2021, I kept preaching. All the, Listen, so many of you weren't even there. And I kept preaching, Major, did I keep preaching that 2021 is not going to be any better. Well, if we can just get to 2022, it'll be better. I said, listen, 2022 is not going to be any better. And they said, well, we just turn it into 2023. It's going to get better. I said, 2023 is not going to get better. Every year gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And yet we just sit back like, well, I don't know what we can do. I'll tell you what we do. We stand up for Jesus. Right. We'd hold the Bible high. Amen. We'd hold the bloodstained banner up, man. Listen, when when Hitler took over Germany, you know what they want to say? Listen, they wanted to put the do you realize that they took the flags and they wrapped them in the swastika? But I'm gonna tell you the church flags, and I want to tell you what, listen, that wasn't enough. Listen, there was not room for the church flag and for the flag of Nazi Germany. And guess what which one won in the end? Nazism. One in the end. You can't wrap. You can't wrap our flags into cultural Marxism. You can't wrap our flags into rainbow flags. Amen. I saw what Elon Musk. How many people know who Elon Musk is? Mm -hmm. He got some of those folks in his family. If you don't know that, I like to hear the rainbow flag on it. Come up, come up on my Twitter, and he said, "What country is this?" Mm -hmm. Just asking for a friend. He said. What country is it? What country is that? What, what, listen, listen, what, listen what, what's wrong with America? We take our White House and we take the American flags and put them on both sides and put a pride flag in the middle of it and hang it from the United States White House in America. What's wrong with us? I think what might have been true of the Jews that they had come out of Babylonian captivity and they tried to reform what happened without having a real relationship with Jesus. And Jesus told that parable that the worst last state of them would be worse than the first. I believe it was true. I believe it could have been talking about the Pharisees who had that outward form of religion, but inwardly, he said, man, listen, just white and sepulchers. You're dead men on the inside. I believe it could apply to them. But so help me, Jesus, I believe that parable can apply to you and I tonight that we're many times, many of the churches in America, they're just white and sepulchers. Yeah, right. Amen. Full of dead men's bones. Yeah. Because there's no Holy Spirit in them. Right. Remember what Jesus said about the Laodicean church? I'm not going to get to my lesson tonight. Can you tell? Right. Will that be all right with you? Yeah. We come back next week. Listen. Listen. Remember what Jesus said about the Laodicean church? The Laodicean church was the seventh church of the seven churches of Revelation, which was the church that directly preceded the rapture of the church. We are living in the Laodicean church. We are close to the rapture of the church. And this is what Jesus said about them in verse 17, chapter number 3. He said, because thou sayest. Mm -hmm. He told the church, he did a little inspection. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling if he had walked through many churches in America tonight, he'd probably vomit. Right. He'd probably puke his guts out. Right. From what he's seeing out there, people flying and people doing everything in the world, people affirming this and affirming that, and people doing all this stuff instead of preaching the gospel and preaching what the Bible says and telling people, listen, you're going to die in your sin if you don't get saved. Jesus said to that church, he said, because thou sayest, mm -hmm. because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. That's most churches today. That's most churches today. They've got buildings. They've got monuments. They've got bank accounts. They've got all these things, but they're void on this. They don't have the Spirit of God. They, they listen. They're missing. They're, they're missing that part about being saved and having Jesus in your heart. And that seventh church, the Laodicean church, was that church in which we're living. That's the modern, liberal, cultural, wokeism church that we're seeing promoted all over America today. Yeah. Yep, that's true. And Jesus said, because thou sayest. They said, 
I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. This is what Jesus said to him. Jesus said, And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You say, what's Jesus' message to, the, to all these churches? And I'll tell you what it is. You're wretched. You're wretched. You're miserable. You're poor. I don't care how much money you listen. If you don't have Jesus, you're poor. Can I say that again? If you don't have Jesus, you you have every listen. You have buildings. You can have campuses. You can have universities. You can have cemeteries. You can have everything you want. But if you don't have Jesus, you're poor. Amen. They said, you know what? You don't even know that you're wretched. You don't even know that you're miserable. You don't even know that you're poor and blind. When you're blind, you can't see. And naked. Why? Wow. America has basically kicked God out of everything you can kick Him out of. Right. We've taken Christianity out of everything. We've taken, we've, taken, we've taken Him out of our country. We've taken Christianity out of our out of our government. All you got to do is let somebody stand up and say, I'm a born again Christian. Boy, I'll tell you, you talk about the slurs. Let somebody stand up and say, well, you know, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. You're talking about, man, listen, they'll turn the wolves of hell loose on you. Right. They'll call you ever and you bigot. They'll call you ever derogatory. This is coming from the tower, the supposed to be tolerant side over there. Yeah. <laughs> we kick God out of our school. We kick God out of our businesses. We kick God out of the media. We kick God out of entertainment. We kick God out of many churches right. today. Amen. And we wonder, preacher, what's wrong with America? I'm going to tell you what's wrong with America. We're godless. We're empty. We're empty. We're empty of God. We're empty of Jesus. We're empty of the Holy Spirit. We're empty of that in our lives and in our churches. And then let me just stop right there and say, when it starts in the pulpit, we got the wrong person in the pulpit, it'll filter right out into the pew. Yeah. Amen. Listen, you'd have to be you'd have to be a real listen, you don't want me to call you what I'd want to call you because you get mad lit. You'd have to be a real something to sit under my preaching and walk out that door and say, well, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> you'd have to be a, a, a nut. Right. I mean you'd have to you'd have to be something wrong with you. But you sit under somebody and you hear him, I hear him. Well we're just we're just we're just not gonna tell them. we're not gonna tell them about we're not gonna preach on sin. Listen, what, what are we going to do with the adulterer? What are we going to do with the fornicator? What are we going to do with the gambler? What are we going to do with the alcoholic? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're just going to kick, we're just going to kick the Bible out and say, well, just come on in. I'll tell you what we've done. We've made church a social club. Right. You say, preacher, I don't like that kind of preaching. Well, there are a lot of churches out there that would be glad to accommodate you. Right. They'd be glad to have you. Pack their pew and pack their pocketbooks and you sit there and grin and laugh. And, hee, hee, hee. and you might wind up busting hell wide open. Right. Right. I don't know about you. I don't know if you know this or not. I've got to give an account for me right. and for you. Yep. Amen. Pastor the church is responsible for that. Yes. That's what's always, I'm always amazed when people say, well, I disagree with the pastor. Well, what authority do you have to disagree with the pastor? Amen. That's right. 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 I don't care. Listen, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to tell you. You can disagree with me all you want. But it's usually people, people don't know anything what they're talking about. Amen. They don't know, they don't know enough Bible to get themselves out of the rainstorm out there. Right. But they hear something that rubs them wrong and say, well, I just disagree with him. I'll tell you what, I disagree with a lot of preachers myself. Right. Yeah. In fact, you know, there are a lot of preachers. They don't call themselves preachers anymore. And I applaud them. I heard you guys say, I applaud them. They call themselves life coaches. Mm. Because they're not preachers. Amen. They're not preachers. So when they say, we don't, care. we don't call ourselves preachers, I applaud them. Amen. Thank you for having the guts and the courage to say because you're not a preacher. Preachers preach the Bible. Amen. Preachers Amen. tell people about Jesus. People, preachers tell people about heaven and about hell and about sin and about judgment. And you, one of these days, Hebrews nine twenty seven. Listen, mark this verse down. 
It is appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. Amen. Amen. You see, it's easy to believe this foolishness until you get ready to die and face God. Right. You believe it? Oh, you know, I, I believe this, and I believe. Listen, you can. You can believe anything you want to believe. But when it gets down time to face God, mm -hmm. I've heard the stories. I know. God, I, I remember the story of a guy one time in the mercy room. Took him to the mercy room. I said, "I didn't think he's going to live. He's going to die." I called the preacher. Man, got the pastor in there. Man, he said, "Man, listen, I need to get saved." He said, "Man, you're a church member." You better, he said, "I've been pretending." You can play and pretend until you get ready to take your last breath and realize you've got to stand before the holy, almighty God and give an account for what you believe. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. If it doesn't line up with this right here, I'm going to give you a heads up. I'm going to give you a heads up before you get there. So it won't be on my shoulders. If what you believe does not line up with this book, you are in trouble. Yep. God is bound by His Word. God is a holy God. God cannot lie. And God gave us the Bible. And God told us exactly what's supposed to be. And if you disagree with that, you're going against God. That's right. Amen. You say, I disagree with you. You can disagree with me all you want. If one thing disagree with me, if another thing disagree with God. I could be hitting the corner on Judgment Day, wouldn't you? Yeah. And to see some of these people when they have to stand before Almighty God. Right. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to tell God, I'm going to give Him a piece of my mind. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. Sure you are. It'll be the most frightening, scary mm -hmm. time that you've ever had. Amen. Amen. Right. When you stand before a holy God, unsaved and lost, and being ready to cast, be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. And you're going to stand there and laugh and make fun and say, well, you know, I believe this. And God ain't going to care what you believed. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. We've done everything. The cultural movement, this Marxist uh, cultural Marxism, and everything they can to destroy God and everything, uh, everything that they can about God and Jesus out of our country. Amen. 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 Listen, when Jesus is not in your heart, when Jesus is not in your heart, this goes for you, it can go for the church, it can go for the nation, it can go for your home. When Jesus is not in your heart, and he's been removed, there's a vacuum and a void that's been left, and Satan is going to fill it. Amen. Amen. When you take the Bible and say, I'm not going to believe the Bible, then Satan's going to give you a lie to believe in his place. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. You say, I'm not going to go, go, go by Christianity. I believe that old fuddy-duddy stuff. I don't believe that. Then he's going to put some liberal, modern something in there to take its place. Yes. Satan will fill the void. Amen. Satan will fill the vacuum. You don't just, you know, you don't just, listen, we, you say, we're going to take everybody out of this room. Listen, something's going to fill this room. Air, something's going to fill this room and going to come back in. It's like the AC unit we just talked about not long ago. We had to put vents in there. John cut vents in the doors because we couldn't get enough air returning. It was going. Air couldn't get in because there was already none coming out. You can only blow something up so far. Right, right. And it had to have a return to bring it back out and circulate it. Amen. The same things happened in America. We're not getting any circulation. We just keep blowing foolishness and blowing lies and blowing Satan into our lives. And man, listen, we can't get in. You said, what do we need? We need to I tell you what we need to do. God needs to do a spiritual work in your life and perform a surgery in you and cut you open and take that old cold, stony heart out of you and put you in a new heart that's filled with the love of God and filled with the Holy Ghost of God where you can stand up and say, hey, I can love my brother. I can love my sister. I can even love my enemy. I can even love those that disagree with me. I can love them no matter what nationality they are because I've got the love of God in my heart. Amen. That's what you need, that kind of surgery. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go and say, if I can get a heart doctor to do that, they can't do it. No. It's a spiritual surgery that only God Amen. can do. Amen? Amen. Listen, we have, we have opened up Pandora's box of, of, of all this sexual perversion 
and it's been let loose. And I got to tell you again, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you know the story. Maybe we'll start doing the story of Pandora's box. I don't know if you can ever get it back in. I don't know if you can ever get it back in. But I'm going to tell you what we can do. We can tell our family. Amen. We can pray. You say, what can I do? You command if the foundations be destroyed. What can the righteous do? You can get you an old KJV Bible and you can read it and begin to believe every word of it and believe it is the divine inspired word of God. You can begin to pray for your families that are lost and on their way to hell. If they realized how close they were to hell tonight, they'd be busting that door down to get in and say, preacher, I don't care if there's a storm out there. I don't care if it's hailing out there. I don't care if the parking lot's flooded out there. I need to be saved. That's what people need. Amen. Amen. Wow. America is in the worst shape she's ever been in in her life. Amen. Amen. It's sad to say, man, it's time to go. I ain't down to my point where I want to go. Sad to say, listen, that many people today, they 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 just go along like everything's okay. You know, Trump was going to solve all the problems in 2016. How'd that work out? And then Biden was going to solve everything in 2020. Well, how'd that work out? Well, I'm looking for the next election, and, and I, I got a feeling that's going to, I got a feeling they're going to be all the same. Yeah. Here is the hope of America. Here is the hope. Man, it's not in a political party. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And man, listen, that's what we need. Amen. And people just sit around like, well, I believe everything's okay. Get your head up out of the sand and put your rear end out of the air and get a reversal on that and look around you and realize we are in desperate shape tonight. It's not okay. We're going farther and farther and farther into sin. Right. Every day. We're living, I'm going to give you a term, we're going to get ready to close. We're living in what they call post Christian America. Right. You know what that means? You know what that means? That means we're past the Christian era. Right. That means we're no longer living in Christianity in America like it once was. We're living what they call it post Christian America. Right. We're living, listen, there was a time when people that believed, hey, and there was a time when people that believed like me, we were in the majority. Yes. Yes. Now we stay may be, and there may be a lot of little guys out there, man, that believe like we do. I need to tell you what you need, you need to stand up and be counted. Amen. Right. It's time to get off the seat to do nothing. You yes. say, I'm standing on, standing on, sitting, on, sitting on the premises, man, you need to stand on the promises, not just sit on the premises. Yes. Amen. It's time for you to stand up and be counted, man. I'm telling you what, man. Listen, I, listen. I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it. It's gonna, it'll bother you. I don't care if it bother, I don't care if you get mad. I don't care if you. Get, I don't, right now, I, I'd go bear hunting with a switch right now. <laughs> now in about ten minutes, I probably won't feel like this. But right now, I'd go bear hunting with a switch. I gave that altar call Sunday. Every man in this church should have been lined up around this altar. Hey. Every man in this church should have been lined up around this altar with their families praying and begging and asking God to do something in America. Amen. Amen. You got to stand and believe that people say, well, I think everything's okay. God, help you. God help you if you believe everything's okay. We're living in post-Christian America. Things are not getting better. That's right. They're getting worse. Right. But if you're a child of God, Amen. If you let me to give you some if you're a child of God, hang on. Amen. The Bible said, looking for that blessed hope yes. and the yes. glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's coming back. He's coming back, and when he comes back, he's coming back to take us out. He's coming back to rapture us out. He's coming back to get the church, the Christians, out of this world and then give it to Satan, and he can have his Antichrist for seven years, and then God's going to just show him who's in control. Amen. Right. But I'm going to tell you what. If you're looking for this world to get better, you're delusional. You're delusional. We might see a little flare up, a little pocket here and there. We've got enough resistance to what we believe, to the Bible. There are people that absolutely hate the Bible. Hate God, hate Christianity, hate us. Hate us. 
Well, let me just say, in case you're wondering if how you feel affects me, I'm not running for mayor. Amen. I'm not running for political office. I've got a higher office than that. Amen. I got a high calling from God that said, preach the book. Amen. Preach the word. Amen. Preach the word. Amen. Preach the word. Warn people. Warn people. Try to save people from going to hell before it's everlasting too late. That's our job. Amen. And I sure would wish we'd get a lot more folks to join up with us. Amen. But you know what? Hey, Major. Yes, sir. Whether they do or whether they don't, right. we're going to stand on the Word of God. Amen. 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 Don't you, don't you, don't you think that your opinion is going to say, well, you know, by, maybe I tell the pastor I'm against him, it's going to bother. No, you tell the pastor you're against him, I'll get up here and fire right back at you again next week. All right. Man, you listen, you, your, your scowls and your looks don't bother. I'm not intimidated nor impressed right. by people in the pew. Because one of these days I'm going to stand before Almighty God right. and give an yeah. account. For how faithful I was to him, not not for how much I tickled your ears. Right, right. Made you feel good about your sin. Any preacher that makes you feel good about your sin ain't no preacher. That's right. Any preacher that tickles your ears and tells you just continue to live in sin, I don't care what sin it is, they ain't no preacher. Amen. <laughs> they ain't no preacher gonna preach that. I got a feeling heaven's gonna be full of them. Right. Preachers that stood. And preach the word of God. Amen. Wow. What a day that will be. Miss Ruth, have you got us a song tonight? You don't have. Well, we've got to have somebody. We're going to stand and somebody hum us a song. Just as I am. Can somebody just stand up and get ready to sing that just in a minute? Let me ask you a question before we get started. I'll give Miss Ruth a chance. I'll give her about two seconds to get ready. <laughs> every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Lord, that I was excited and passionate and fired up Amen. about the condition of America Amen. and about the soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, I pray tonight that you bless our church. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for our people. Thank you for people being saved. New folks that are coming being saved. Rededicating. Giving their hearts to Jesus. Yes. And Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, we're going to get ready to close here just in a minute. Before I do, every head bowed, nobody looking around. How many people can be honest? And just slip their hand up and by that. And I don't have to say a word, but just raising your hand up and down. By that, say, preacher, I know I'm saved. God bless you. I know I'm saved. If I die today, I know I'm on my way to heaven. God bless you. Wonder tonight if you're here tonight. Maybe you couldn't raise your hand. And you say, Preacher, I know I'm not saved. I, I, man, I need to be saved. I need to have Jesus in my heart. Has anybody got enough courage to slip their hand up? And You don't have to say something about that. You say, Preacher, I need Jesus in my heart. I need to be saved. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved and you're not where you ought to be, pray a prayer something like this. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And I know I cannot save myself. But tonight, the best I know how, I'm asking Jesus to come into my heart and save me. Did you pray that? If you want to be saved tonight, would you come down and take me by the hand? Say, preacher, I prayed that prayer. I want Jesus in my heart. I don't want to die and go to hell. 